Graham I wanted to show you that you are not on your own in terms of problematic recording days um, <laughs> but this isn't a word of a lie and uh, no collaboration the next door neighbor started up his uh, lawnmower the uh, children next door are playing just the other side of the fence which is perfectly entitled to do but it was all lovely and quiet and I could have this very nice outside studio sort of thing um, before all of this started going uh, what I really wanted to show you was um, that you're not the only lunatic in the asylum as it were because this is my stand-in uh, I'd like you to introduce you to uh, Eric too um, he's uh, a bit two-dimensional for my money but what Eric is about is that I was having problems talking to a camera and instead of your suggestion of the fluffy toy or the non-threatening object um, I started with uh, well this fella um, who I could also use to um, focus on and generally act as a stand-in because the problem that I've got is that whilst my wife seems to enjoy watching some of the videos um, she doesn't share my enjoyment of um, making them um, there's always room for experimentation and there's always room for a bit of fun in, in terms of pursuing your hobby because no matter how hard we try we aren't going to uh, ever threaten the professionals um, if it's only because we haven't got the budget let alone the manpower um, I'll show you another thing I was playing with and given the rapidity of the response I think you'll see that uh, this was in train before uh, any of the recent correspondence um, pardon this one take ain't it but um, here it is now I hope you can see that this was going to be a hilarious um, fake prop um, that uh, it's your book um, that uh, your imaginary your virtual book and um, I was just going to pick it up and just show it was a cardboard cut out uh, but hopefully leave it uh, sat on a on a casually on a table showing that actually I was the plagiarist copying from other people's works uh, oh well perhaps it's not that funny perhaps that's why I didn't do it um, the um, thing I would say is that I'm no great shakes at statements to camera and the problem with autocue is that whilst you you do definitely get better at it um, and with practice you don't sound as if you're reading and when you learn to trust the pace of the autocue text scrolling because you've done it that's helpful and also if you can use concealed earpieces um, then um, you can also start giving yourself pre-recorded sound directions just as a reminder as a cue so the other thing I've never seen done um, in a video is uh, people referring to uh, notes and um, 
I have seen it done um, with a statement to camera by a, a reporter but um, I, d I just don't see why um, we should be constrained to avoid looking at um, a few scribble notes that will just prompt us and um, allow us to uh, do things more easily. The content uh, is important rather than the delivery, as long as the delivery doesn't distract. And the final thing I would say, by the way, is that I feel that when we are trying to do everything via statement to camera, that puts undue pressure on the fluidity and clarity of our diction. And that probably um, it would be better if once we've done the establishing shot of this is me talking to you, that we then use whatever device we can to switch so that it is a voice over and to switch to uh, uh, images illustrating what we're talking about or even um, caption bills or stuff like that. Um, there are potentially a number of uh, devices and if you occasionally stumble rather than resorting to the jump cut now I'll just show you something if we, if I got stuck here I could either continue and then use something from the b-roll to put over as an image and then paste on uh, a little sticking plaster audio bit to bridge the stutter, stumble, loss of fluidity, whatever. So I could do an audio edit whilst keeping the video going. Or I can, um, I've got the option of just stopping the camera and continuing with the statement to camera but instead of doing it as a, a jump cut now by a jump cut I mean that no matter how well you blend it in it always looks odd um, there's always a, a jump in the action. But, let me show you this. Provided you change the uh, angle and the shot, then you can normally get away with splicing on your sound and video to pick up where you left off. makes life a lot easier but you have to remember and be disciplined so that whenever you change a scene you also change the shot well that's the theory at any rate but obviously next door neighbors lawnmower there ain't no way you're going to get rid of that completely. Although, I am using the down the shirt lavalier mics with the fuzzy dead cat fitted just to hopefully attenuate the wind noise and to improve the signal to noise ratio. Although, quite frankly, you'd have to speak up if you were um, talking face to face uh, to um, combat the noise of that lawn more. These things are sent to try as next door neighbours, doubly so.